Welcome to Learn at Lunch. This is a uh, Let's Really Teach HVAC video. Chris McCarver is a contractor on this job. In her, and my name is Carl Darch. And I'm going to be narrating it and filming this. We're doing an historic house in the city of Detroit. This is one of many that is being redone, the last one on this block. It had a lot of damage to it. But the old steam system was really bad, so we have to go with something new. This house is stripped down and it's being rebuilt to today's standards to get, make sure that uh, we're all good. All the mechanicals are removed. Over here you can see they sistered the floor joists here and they had to put in some lamb beams also to hold the second floor partition walls up. Here, all of the oak floor was removed in the kitchen area and in the dining room area, and it was uh, cleaned up and saved. These partition walls are put in there so that the heating pipes and other things can be put in. Chris is in the basement putting in a uh, second air handler on this job. There's one in the basement and there's one up on the third floor. The third floor is going come along a little bit farther than this one. But I just wanted to show putting in this, uh, a 20 by 25 media filter. Chris likes to seal his uh, between with the clear silicone caulk, and then he screws it together. And the XX caulk will come off on the inside and not on the outside. He thinks it gives him a neater job. He's not wrong, it's very nice, very neat. Here we are making the final connections to the air handler in the basement. And since everybody's going to be taking a look at this, and it's far from being finished, but it's nice to get everything straight and level. And then once it gets sealed and hung and sealed in a place, it'll be there for the next 50 years. See how this stuff is a little the, uh, thinner than the other stuff that we use? Space pack runs at this time. Oh, yeah. So that stuff is for the attic. The the rating is R8, so the insulation is a little thicker. Mm -hmm. And this is R6, so the insulation is a little thinner. So we will use this for the downstairs. It's coming with the kit, and there's your movement. You see, it's just a twist on. Now, how do you seal the rest of it? Do you take that? So I... <laughs> okay, here we are. We're oh, just going to tuck it in again, and then we're going to run underneath the collar. And then there's the flex tape it. seal. I like flex tape. Ever since it came out, it's been a very good product. I like it a lot. By the way, did you know that you can also put that on one of those tape dispensers? I found out that for some jobs, that actually works better. Same like you would do with a packing tape. Works good. It makes it very easy to get it off, and you don't have to do that right there. Here you're done. Okay. Done to send my profession. So, right on uh, to the next thing. Tape. Make sure you don't put things at the end so, of the trunk line. Right there. So I have two runs that I need to go there. And I want to go out at 45 so it looks smooth and it doesn't look taunt. So I'm going to go ahead and drill a, I believe this is two and one eighth hole for the space pack. Some good metal hole saw, bi-metal hole saw, works great on these projects. Now you have to get the little cutoff out of the inside of the duct. Going fishing. That go fishing. There we go. I want this inside the unit when it turns on, high velocity will make a lot of noise. So, definitely want to get these metal parts out. There you go. The part that goes on, nice thick seal. Mm -hmm. I like that. If you put a little frosting on there, it could be mixed up with our donuts. And then, this is the ring that's the part of the uh, space pack system where they're just twist and lock. 
All right, now I can see it really well. We have the hole in the top there. Okay. And he's taking the, uh, the sticky stuff that never comes off the way it should in, in the videos. And he's putting that. I do not want to block it. It just goes on the outside edge. Now that's your foam seal. Now he takes the plastic. That's it? Nope. We have four retaining clips that go inside. Okay. And then there's four, so one, two, three, four. And that secures that's it to the dock. So when you put you push that down and it snaps in. Correct. And space bag actually provides a right. tool to help with that. Ah, isn't so, that cute? Yeah, so it kind of comes in handy. Okay, so let's see you go ahead and put these clips on. And if you don't have the tool, which is fine, you can do it with your fingers. But after 347 openings, your fingers would fall off? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, you got that. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> but you want to hear a secure snap like this. Snaps, snap, snap. So that's what you want to hear. And then since we have this at a 45, we can put our coupling piece. Right. Snap that one on and now this is not going anywhere. Right, okay. Which is what we want. And I'm gonna hook this up and get it to where I need to be. Right. Then cut it and then run it properly so it looks nice. So. And it's just a snap. Now it's secure. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to pop out. So we need a minimum of nine feet. Okay. And the continuator piece is three feet. So we have to accommodate for that as well. So what I like to do is just get my run to where I need to be. Stuff it into the opening and figure out what I need to cut. So right about there, I should be good. Have enough slack if needed be. Cutting the product is very easy. A nice to do it. It's aluminum duck. Next thing you have to do is just like we did before. Tuck and tape. Tuck it inside and then tape it up Same with the flex before. tape. Flex tape. Indeed. And now you're Ooh. done and ready to go. Extremely important, especially on a high velocity. Although now it's going to be required on everything. Which one here? And there's that seam right there. You can go a step further and also seal that as well. We don't want any air leaks. Okay, like I said, the rough is done. This equipment is installed. You can see we have the green approved sticker there. Now we come up here, and this is where it splits top of the unit. And this one goes right through the wall, right through that wall, and into that crawl space and into that room. The only crawl space in this house has been foamed. The walls and everything else have been foamed. It is pretty wide spanned, so they removed the floor on top and uh, they leveled it up and installed a steel uh, beam with some supports, a dead center down the middle of this. And when the floor goes back on, and the, all of the supply registers, uh, supply openings will be coming up through the floor. Sealed, uh, duct sealed, duct seal all the way through. I like using a spiral a lot less to seal anyway. Mm -hmm. It goes right through the wall. This spiral duct is for? Our space bag system. Um, for our first floor uh, portion of this project. And behind there, or right here, is our wall. That's going to be for our uh, boiler system. We've got adequate amount of sprue, so. Indeed. So 
so I um, don't get spoiled that much. What is the boiler system doing? What are you, what are you heating with this boiler? So it is going to be our combination boiler. So we're going to do heating and we're going to do domestic uh, water. Uh, we're going to take care of two heating coils in our first floor space pack and our third and second floor space pack. And then we're going to have a, another zone down in the basement for uh, traditional, yep. our, our slam fit uh, three quarter inch uh, baseboard. Okay. Coil the third at the uh, third floor that's doing the third and second floor. Uh, it's been on pressure for about a month, so no one's hit it and we have no leaks, so it's always a good thing. Okay, this is in the attic, former attic. It's now going to be living space. The return air has been put in, and uh, we've got two going down. And as you can see, we got one tap for the third floor unit. This third floor used to be made up for uh, servants quarters at one time but um, they're not used in this house for that it's just going to be a lot of good extra space so here we have it when the wall is up and a new return for the third floor is in the second floor one that we saw is down below that through the floor and we have one just around the corner here coming off the side and going down also as you can see right there down into the main floor those are actually going into two separate rooms so he's kind of grabbing the return here and there which is a very good idea on some of these larger okay, rooms the here in a little compartment where you can see the space pack is set we'll get up a little closer pictures but you can see we have it balanced we have it hung from the ceiling Eliminates the vibration. Uh, Chris, what type of humidifier did, that, or did you put on this one? Uh, it's a General Air 1000 powered uh, powered fan. Powered fan. So no, obviously no bypass no on a high bypass. pressure. Flow through type. Mm -hmm. um, General Air Max 2000 20 by 25. What type of thermostats are you using? Uh, homeowner is set on this because of the automation part of it with the. Uh, smoke detectors and their um, cameras and everything like that so they like to have that all tied in together so we're going with the nest system on this one well let's take a little look at how the ductwork comes out of the room there the unit is just to the left of us and through this space here goes straight across because we have a chimney right there and goes into another knee wall area so coming out of this room, which may have been a bedroom at one time, is going across on the other side. That's the end of the duct, going underneath the knee wall. As you can see, it wraps around in a little alcove area. That's left above the thing. And then underneath, a little seat area. And then back behind the knee wall. And it come up and service the room up in the third floor. And at the same time, there's ones that will go down and service the first floor. I mean, the second floor. The floor up below us here. So, as you can see, that's the duck in the attic. This is on the other side, coming off the other way on the T. And as you can see, there they come up. And if you look straight, straight across, you can see where we were standing there. So on this side, it just goes down the side here goes up into the attic space here and then down below into the space below us here which we'll take a look at we're on the second floor second. now and so up from the third floor here's the uh, runs coming down from the attic to, to do the second floor nice space here let's come over on this side here you can see the red mules are the water lines going up to the attic. Okay, we're up on the second floor, and this is where we have the rest of the space pack system coming in from the attic third floor. So, we're going to talk to Chris. I asked Chris a question, and uh, I said, "Be honest about it." And Chris, uh, you're using space pack on this job, and nobody's telling you, or how should I say, nobody's giving you a break and giving you the stuff for free. You decided to do this on your own. Uh, and, and you also do regular standard forced air, is that correct? Yes. 
So why did you use space back here instead of regular standard forced air? Uh, simplicity of you know running the ductwork, um, just because of how much living space we have to accommodate and to get proper returns and supplies in could be a heavy task. Uh, therefore, taking a lot of room up in um, livable space, and um, so with space pack, we're able to run in one continuous nine-inch duct and have a short return run and able to accomplish the same as we would with a traditional system with less, you know, material, less less headaches essentially. And you really do get a straight good quality job and good quality heating and cooling out of that space pack system. Definitely. And uh, this way here too, if you notice, we can tie the space pack into our high, high efficiency boiler system too, so that uh, everything is together, which we really like to do. It is allowed now in the state of Michigan to have an air changer as of this year, and especially on any new projects, any uh, new house construction, remodels like this, because of the uh, uh, we're making it with foam insulation. You got a hitch, kitchen hood fan. You got a, the clothes dryers. You got uh, bathroom fans. All of this stuff removes air, so we need to have proper air being brought back into the house and controlled. And the best way to do that is through an air changer. And if you have a little return in the basement, that'll help keep the basement uh, also pretty fresh and nice too. This is a new code to help prevent CO poisonings. We found that with the tighter houses, more insulation, the law of unintended consequences, make it that the house is too tight and that carbon monoxide is building, so the amount of CO poisonings across this country has arisen. So an air changer is a good way of helping to prevent carbon monoxide poisonings. And a return in the basement will also help keep the basement fresh with one of these units. You can change that air, get rid of the excess moisture. So here we are wrapping it up, the end of this little project here that uh, for now, and come on back and see this whole thing running and behaving like it should.